Hey, 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 you're listening to Friday's Flavor with New York's finest business B, Jolene D. Every Friday, we're digging deep with business owners, non-for-profits, and entrepreneurs alike, bringing you the hottest tips and topics on the business world. You know what they say, if you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. So tune in and get ready to grow, my busy bees. Welcome to Friday's Flavor with your girl, JoJo, and today we have Howard Vicks from Northeast Thermography Medical Imaging and Consulting. He's a good friend of mine. He's based out of Clifton Park. He can be reached at 518-368-4546, and check out their website, medthermography.com. Howard, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate you being here. My pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. No, absolutely. Uh, he's got a beautiful wife, Diane, who he works with, and um, they are in medical imaging, but not the, the, the oh, I love you, and not in the standard, uh, you know, medical scene. Uh, they're more into the natural wellness, and every, if anybody who knows me out there, you know, I'm all about natural health and wellness, and I love to promote companies, especially local ones, who are all about that as well. So, Northeast Thermography, why don't you tell our listeners, Howard, what is thermography? Okay, that, that's, that's a good place to start. But let me, let me do this. Let me give you a definition. The definition is thermology. Thermology is the field of science and study of the heat patterns of the human body and the interpretation of those patterns. Thermography is the process of mapping those thermal patterns. So. Thermography uses a digital thermal camera to map the subtle temperature variations of the skin. And okay. so by doing that, what we can see is we can see inflammation and inflammatory processes in the body. Oh, that's really interesting. And let's face it, inflammation is the root of all pain and disease. Oh, yes. Uh, so I have heard many, many a time um and you know what why would a person want to use thermography you know for, for everybody out there who's listening who who's maybe never heard about it before and doesn't know very much about this you know what what does it do in terms of benefits okay great um the when you look at the disease process the disease process is classically broken up into six phases or stages now by the time that changes start taking place physiologically and we start experiencing symptoms that disease has progressed to stage four stage five or potentially even mm -hmm. stage six yeah. which is end stage inflammation is stage two so the benefit is if you can catch a developing physiological change at the inflammation stage you have time you have time to say, well, wait a second, what can I do differently? What can I change that can slow, halt, and even reverse this developing trend? Wow, so, so that helps to detect, I mean, how many different diseases? What kind of things do you see the most? Well, here's, here's the thing. Um, thermography, because it's, it, it's, Thermography can detect the thermal patterns associated with a number of different conditions. Everything from dental issues to cardiovascular stroke risk, thyroid function, hormonal imbalances, cardiac uh, function, um, respiratory function, internal organs, digestive issues, musculoskeletal neuropathies. And it's all because there's different thermal patterns that are associated with different functions and different systems. Oh, wow. You know what? This makes me think of a question, uh, you know, that we haven't really talked about yet. How does that even work? Uh, I know you've said you need to have a controlled environment, but like, how? It seems well, wild. You know, well, here, here's, let me, let me answer the question this way. This is, I think, something that everybody can relate to. Have you ever been to the doctor and the doctor has you lay down and they kind of push on different areas on your abdomen, right? Mm -hmm. And if there's something in, inside that's going on and they hit that one spot and you just about jump up off the table, you go, oh, well, 
the doctor knows that based on where on the body he got that reaction, that's, that correlates with the function of a specific organ. Oh, the wow. idea is very, very similar with thermology, depending on what type of patterns we're seeing, where we're seeing them, the, the balance is going to give us an indication of the organ or system that's, that's affected. And that's basically saying, hi, pay attention to me. Yeah, wow. And it catches it earlier, which is why you see so many, um, you know, women in regards to getting scans specifically of the upper torso so that, you know, even before a, um, a mammogram, you know, thermography can catch something before it, um, you know, becomes a worse issue, a stage three, four, five issue, correct? Yeah. And, and and let me, let me, let me, uh, I need to be very, very clear because I'm sure the FDA is listening. And, and quite frankly, um, we need to be as a professional, as someone who is elevating the standard for thermography and bringing thermography into the medical mainstream, which is what we're doing. I mean, quite frankly, thermography is an important tool. Okay. But here's something that's really important to understand. Thermography is different than other imaging modalities, okay? Think of x-rays, CAT scans, MRIs, ultrasound. Those are all imaging modalities that are looking at structure. Thermography is actually looking at physiology or function. And so at thermography, what we're really doing with medical thermography is that we are capturing real-time information on the physiology of the body. And we can see, based on those thermal patterns, evidence of inflammation and inflammatory processes. And so it's an apples to oranges comparison. Ideally, thermography should be integrated as, as a tool. It's really, it's another tool that medical practitioners have and should use because it, it sees the body differently than any other imaging modality does. And therefore, it's able to provide information that doctors can't get any other way because it sees the body differently. It's looking at, at something totally different. I love that. And, you know, this is nothing against mammograms but none of us look forward to them <laughs> because I have yet, I have, I have yet to see a woman say, I can't wait for my next mammogram. <laughs> I can't wait happen. to get my breast stuffed into a machine and flattened. So here's, so, 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 so let's, so let's talk about, let's talk about what the difference between in, in that very specific instance, when we talk about monitoring the health of the breast, what is a mammogram and what is a thermogram? A mammogram uses ionizing radiation, contact, to look for an anomaly in the structure of the breast tissue that would be indicative of potentially an uncontrolled uh, growth cell or, or an, an uncontrolled um, growth that's happening. Uh, it, what, what, what it's actually, I think, it's um, abnormal cell activity, I think, is probably the correct way to do it. Now, when you think about this, anything that grows requires food. Yes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. If something is growing in your body, it requires food in the form of increased blood flow. Okay. That makes sense to me. Okay. Now, by the time something that may be growing in the breast is big enough to be seen by a mammogram or it's big enough to be palpated, mm -hmm. right? It's been growing for eight to 10 years undetected and has over 4 billion cells. Now, when you think of this, because it is something that's growing, thermography can see the thermal patterns associated with increased vascularity and increased blood flow years before there's enough cells to be seen in a structural imaging. Wow, this blows my mind because I feel like it's something that I should have already known about. You know what I mean? I feel like it's something that 
everybody should know about. Like I want to t- tell I, I, every I, I, single I woman that. about. You know, can you help me get the word out? <laughs> yes, definitely. Right? That's but, crazy. I mean, Jolene, don't feel bad because ninety nine percent of medical doctors have never heard of thermography. Wow. And so that's why you know if 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 someone asks their doctor, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of having a thermal study done, you know, chances are, you know, at best they'll say, yeah, okay, fine. You want to do it. That's fine. Or, you know, that's, that's nonsense. That's ridiculous. That's, that's, that's get a horrible. mammogram. Yeah. You got to get a mammogram. That's the gold standard, right? Yeah. So, well, that's um, what they make money off of Howard. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Uh, the yeah, unfortunate that's truth. Over beer. <laughs> 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 that's not, that's not, that's not, that we won't get into that one. Yet. Um, <laughs> But you know, here's you know, here's the other thing. Thermography is the, the beauty of thermography is it's absolute safety. There, it's 100% safe. There is no contact. It's non-invasive. You don't have to swallow anything. They don't inject anything. You don't have to flush something out of your body. There's no radiation. You could literally have a thermal study done every day of the rest of your life. There's no risk. There's no side effect. Oh, that's good to know, too, because radiation. Uh, I'm not standing in front of my microwave on the regular for obvious reasons. <laughs> you well, know? you know, there's, there, there's, there's, there's no doubt that exposure radiation has an effect on the, on the body. That's, I, I don't care who you talk to. There's no denying that. Um, yeah. You know, you can take that as far as you want. But there are, you know, thermography is also used as a, um, as an adjunctive imaging modality for people who, we see a lot of clients who, who come to us and, and one of the benefits of thermography for these clients is that they're, you know, they may have been experiencing symptoms for months or years, sometimes more than a decade. And they've been to this doctor, they've had that test done, they've been to the other doctor, they've had another test done. And they've had this series of things done. And here they are a year, two years, five years, eight years later. Symptoms are no better. In fact, they're usually worse. And by this time, the doctors say, I don't know what's wrong with you. It's got to be in your head. Right? Thermography can, can provide that missing piece of the puzzle that can allow the doctors to connect the dots. And so... It's used as an adjunctive imaging modality for, for, you know, in diagnostics as well. In and of itself, thermography is not diagnostic, but because of the way it sees the body and because it sees so much more of the body, where we, where we experience the symptoms is not necessarily where the root cause is. Right. Thermography right. can provide that bigger picture. And I've got, I've got a bunch of, of, of images that, if we have a couple of minutes, we can kind of go through. I don't know. If I was going to say, I want to see some pictures. So let's take a look at, at, at some of the some of the things that we can see. Let's talk about cardio real quick. Um, one of the things that we can see is we can see evidence of uh, increased inflammation in the vasculature that feeds the head. Okay, so if you look at this uh, image right over here, you've got two columns of images. The image on the right. Can you see this red pattern right here? Yeah, right and underneath the ear. Underneath the ear going down to the, the shoulder, right? And you see this little white spot right down here? I do. Okay, what we're seeing here is we're seeing the heat associated with early stage vascular disease. Okay? Oh my we're gosh. Heat associated with inflammation. This would be, this would be one of those um, uh, stroke risk red flags. Oh okay? my gosh. Um, if we look at, um, this image right here, you see this image right here that we're looking at? Yes. Okay. Now, when we, in this particular color palette is called a medical high definition color palette. Um, black is cold, white is hot. So what we're looking for, and then as it goes, kind of goes black, purple, blue, light blue, green, you know, dark green, light green, yellow, orange, red, white. Okay. So what stands out in this particular image is this dark blue pattern right here. See that? Yeah, I do. Now, one of the things that the doctors who, who, who do our interpretations, and by the way, 
all of our studies are, are interpreted by board certified MDs who are trained thermologists. They're trained in the science to study thermology. Just like a radiologist is a board certified MD who's been trained and certified in radiology. Wow. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. So That's really what, good to know. One of the things that they look for is if you take a line and you draw a line from your nose down to your belly button, yep. the temperature on this side of your body should be the same as the temperature on this side of your body. So if we look here um, in thermography, heat or temperature is indicated by color. So we're seeing an asymmetry in the color patterns here. Well, yeah. this particular dark pattern here is the referral area for the heart. And what this is indicating as, as a potential cause here is reduced blood flow. Okay, yeah. so the blue is showing where there's not enough blood getting to a certain area. More or less, yeah. Okay, technically what it's showing is it's showing where the, the sympathetic nervous system that controls blood flow, right? Sympathetic yep. nervous system is fight or flight, right? It actually redirects blood flow from the skin internally to the organ that needs it. This particular referral area is the referral area for the heart. So if we're seeing this, we're seeing the body redirecting blood flow to the organ. Okay, so then this particular patient had a major problem because that's well, near their heart. Tur turns out that um, this, this, this client was advised to go to his doctor, do not pass go, do not collect $200, get thee to the doctor and, and get an appointment with, with a cardiologist. By the time the cardiologist, you know, was able to do their, their poking, their prodding, their EKG test, their ECG test, their stress test, what they found was they found 90% blockage in the blood flow that feeds this side of the heart. That particular disease is affectionately known as the widowmaker. Wow. Heart attack. People go, boom, like that. So that's something that we see. That, that, is, that is a benefit. Now, did thermography save his life? I can't say that, but what I can say is that thermography gave this individual advance notice that something was going on that needed further investigation. Before he was having heart attack symptoms, which Correct. would have not been good for him. Correct. So wow. let's, take a look, let's take a look at some other things. Um, we see um, one of the things that I, I, we're running tight on time here. So let me, let me go to something that, that um, uh, is, let's see, here we go. This is, this is, a, this is a good series right here, okay? Um, if we look here, can you see this, this particular image up here? Yep. Okay, this is a picture of the abdomen, okay? Now, these, these different color patterns refer to different organs, okay? Okay, these, this area right here is the referral area for the liver. This is the referral area for the pancreas. This is either a urinary tract, bladder, or um, lower, lower, um, uh, large colon. Okay. Um, so, you know, this is the referral area. This shows congestion and some functional issues in the small intestine. Okay. And just some different. You see, everybody's different. Everybody's different. We all have our unique thermal patterns, and these patterns have meaning. Yeah, and it looks like when you see asymmetry in these images, you almost like naturally look for symmetry in everything, I think, as a human anyway. And so mm -hmm. it does immediately jump off, you know, the screen and into your eyes and go, oh, that looks wrong. Or that There's looks something off. that needs further investigation, and that's the that's the beauty of thermography as a tool. So it can be used as a as a proactive approach to um, health and wellness. It can be used as a as a supplemental diagnostic imaging tool. It can also be used to to monitor the effectiveness of a course of treatment. Um, and let's go to one more set of images because I think this is something that's near and dear to everybody's heart and that is the images of the breast, okay? 
Yeah, breast so, health is so important to women, especially. Okay, now again, one of the things that, oh, I'm sorry about this, I double clicked, so I'm gonna. That's okay. Um, so again, one of the things that doctors are gonna look at is they're going to look at, okay, come on, come with me here, come back. Okay, so again, you're looking for symmetry side to side, okay? Red is indicating increased vascularity or increased blood flow in this case. Okay, this is what we see. And oftentimes, and oftentimes, it can, it can be the warning that somebody needs to, to follow up on. Now, a lot of these things, they're based on a, a number of different factors. Um, the, the, the interpreting physician will say, you know, rate the significance of the findings. And if there's three or more significant findings, the recommendation is always prompt clinical correlation and follow up. Wow. So this could really buy women a lot of time if they got regular regular thermography checks to to check out what their reg, what their baseline looks like first of all and be able to spot things you know if they crop up a lot earlier than when now you're having symptoms or you've got a lump or something uh, abnormal going at, on. At, at which point then you got a real problem. Yeah. And so yes, you're absolutely right. The baseline looks for the red flags, okay? The cardiovascular, you know, the stroke risk, the cardiovascular problem, advanced breast disease. But presuming no red flags, the real value of thermography as a, as a tool, um, a, 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 as a proactive approach to health and wellness is in the comparative studies, okay? We all have a, our own unique thermal signature, just like we all have our own unique fingerprints. Your fingerprints don't change with time. Yeah. Your thermal signature should not change with time. And so if we see a change in the thermal pattern, that is an indicator that something is going on that needs further investigation. Need and, to address this. and like you were saying, you could have symptoms in one spot, but the problem area is elsewhere. And so you wouldn't know that unless you got something like this type of imaging. And you, again, I don't know if you can no. see over my shoulder, Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you see this right here? That's that is that is a full body, full torso image. I don't know. Can you see that? Yeah, we can see it. Okay. Again, thermography is going to say this is where the body is saying the problem is. This is the root of the problem here, and so because it shows that bigger picture, it can really allow things to to really kind of be knit together in, in a. It tells a story. It provides a roadmap. But one of the beauties, and I'm going to kind of, I know I'm, I'm looking at the time here. Thermography can also identify immune system stress, adrenal system stress. And now when you think about COVID, you know, people want to know, is my immune system strong? We can see evidence based on the thermal patterns of the body if the immune system is stressed. Oh, wow. That's, I didn't even realize that, but it, it makes sense because, I mean, everything's connected in a way that I, is beyond me regardless. Um, but, I mean, immune health is, is probably one of the most important things. And, you know, I've, I've been big on a gut health kick lately and talking about, you know, how important it is to, to be paying attention to those very small things that don't seem significant, how much water you're drinking, things like that. But it's, it's extremely important. And now I really want to talk about something that you're doing in response to this recent pandemic and, um, you, you know, all the changes to regulations that we're seeing. And it's part of the consulting side of uh, Northeast Thermography Medical Imaging and Consulting. Don't so t me. tell our listeners a little bit about that. Okay. Um, you know, the, the CDC has put out guidelines for the reopening 
of America, right? Yeah. One of those, part of those guidelines is for temperature checks. Now, temperature checks can mean a whole lot of different things. But one of the things that is being, being looked at and is being promoted is thermography. And thermography can be a very, very important tool in the, um, in the right application to check for elevated body temperature. It's actually called EBT or elevated body temperature screening. Some people, you may see the term fever screening, okay? Thermography can be a very, very important tool for that. However, it's not the right tool for every application, okay? So the question is, to a business owner, how do you know if your application is the right application for thermography? And so- Yeah, because I mean, you can't do it outdoors, right? Right, it's gotta be in a controlled environment, which goes back to a comment that you made earlier in the, in the interview. It needs to be done in a controlled environment. And that's part of the standard. And let's face it, anytime there's an opportunity to make money, um, people are gonna come out of the woodwork, okay? You don't but have to convince they, me. <laughs> right? So, right? So, you know, businesses are gonna be approached by people offering everything from soup to nuts. The equipment may not be uh, approved by the FDA for that particular application. Um, the equipment may not be sufficient. It may not have the, the, the correct characteristics. Um, and essentially people can be sold a bill of goods. And, and what we offer is this. We have a depth of knowledge in the field of thermography, both through our training, our experience, our knowledge of the players, the equipment manufacturers, the big firms that are out there, the, the legitimate ones, um, the educational uh, firms that specialize in that. Um, and we can actually help help employers navigate first of all we offer a free 15 minute phone console okay just a free co phone call to say you know this is my application is is this something that thermography would be good for okay in 15 minutes we can let you know a conversation we can let you know whether it's a proper application or not um but presuming it is we offer a suite of, of consulting services everything from basic education to what are the requirements, what is the FDA, what are the FDA guidelines, and what's their enforcement policy, what are the, the, the different types of equipment that are out there, the standards, do they meet FDA requirements, you know, because one of the other things that, that, that these businesses can find themselves in hot water is if they're doing something and because their equipment doesn't meet the, the, the correct standard, they're not following the correct protocol, they're not imaging, they're imaging the forehead instead of imaging the correct place, which is, you know, the inner campus of the eyes, they can set themselves up for legal issues. We can help them avoid that. We can help them navigate that minefield. Right, what what then, business owner has time to read those FDA guidelines and all of that? Good golly, Miss Molly, you ever take, have you ever taken a look at an FDA guide, everything from, anything from the FDA? No. Oh my gosh. You know, you got to have a PhD just to decipher it. Well, the beauty is that we're, I am familiar with this because I've been doing it for 15 years. I'm an educator. I've been, I, I, I've, I've done, I've presented papers. I've done workshops and clinics and applied thermography. I know that I know the science. I'm a, I'm a level three certified thermographer. I know the science. I know the business. I know the players. I can help businesses reopen and do it in a way that makes sense for them that isn't an expensive lesson that gets them nowhere and potentially in legal hot water yeah that's such great information to hear howard i really appreciate you being on and we'll have to have you on again in the future because there's so much more you could talk about with thermography oh but to all of our listeners out there if you are interested in getting checked uh you know getting screened uh with using thermography uh northeast thermography is definitely the place to go speak with howard vix he's easy to find his phone number is 518-368 84546. He's in Clifton Park, New York. Their website is medthermography.com. Howard, it's been such a pleasure.
Pleasure has been mine, Julian. Thank you for having me on. And we're available. Let me just throw out another number, 518-983-6564. That is Northeastern Mography. That's the dedicated phone line. So okay. uh, I'm also on LinkedIn if anybody wants to look for me. Love to link with you guys. Thank Very you so great. Much. Thank you so much. God bless. You take care. Thank you so much. We'll talk Happy to you. Happy Friday, Bye. everybody. Yay. Thanks for listening to Friday's Flavor with your girl, JoJo. Please subscribe to help support local New York business owners. And I hope that you enjoyed. If you want to be featured on Friday's Flavor, please email me at fridaysflavor at gmail.com.